Hey, what is going on guys, and it is Boy Phoenix here today, and what you guys are watching on screen is some Black Ops 3 gameplay, hopefully you guys do all enjoy, I know Infinite Warfare is the current COD, and I probably should be posting it, however, Black Ops 3 seems to be doing better on YouTube, and I thought I'd bring that to you guys today, keep in mind that this is a really old gameplay, it is only a 50 gun streak with the M8 back when it was really OP, nevertheless, hopefully you guys do all enjoy, but today we're not here to talk about the gameplay, we're here to talk about a life story, now this all happened not too long ago and yes you guys have read the title to write me and my buddies were crazy enough to break into an insane asylum and oh my god we were so lucky we got out of there and i'm gonna explain why so the night began with uh, me and my missus, we were just kind of hanging out at home, watching Netflix and whatever, and I got a text from a buddy of mine, and he was like, hey, what's up man, do you want to go to this uh, insane asylum tonight, go check it out, it's kind of like urban exploring and whatnot, if you guys haven't heard about that, it's called urbex in some places, it's pretty much where you go and explore abandoned places, and this was an abandoned insane asylum which we broke into. Okay, and this was all fenced off and everything, but next to this fenced off abandoned insane asylum, there was the actual insane institution, the mental asylum, right next to it. So this was the old one, and then it was rebuilt again next to it. So the entirety of the area was technically grounds for a mental asylum. And this actual proper mental asylum, which housed real patients in it, was only probably about 50 meters away from the actual abandoned institution. So I mentioned before how I was with my missus and we were just kind of watching Netflix, lazing around the house and everything. And we were getting pretty bored, we wanted something to do, and this was a perfect opportunity when my friend messaged me this. And we are like, hell yeah, let's go do it. Uh, my girlfriend was a little bit uh, like, oh, I don't know about it, but... With a little bit of peer pressure, anyone will do anything, right? So we ended up going there, we met them at the McDonald's, and the McDonald's was probably about a 15 minute drive from this place. And keep in mind, this is probably around uh, 10 o'clock at night, so traffic's starting to die down a little bit, and it's really dark and whatnot, obviously. And we rocked up to this place, and it is super eerie, there's this, like thick mist on the bottom of a road, there's these really tall trees around it, and it's honestly in the middle of nowhere. Which obviously makes sense, you're not going to put a mental institution next to a primary school, are you? So we drive up this really eerie road and we park our cars probably a little under a K away from the actual institution because we knew that this place had security and we didn't want to alert them with our like cars and lights and noise and all of that. So we parked a little bit down and we went on a full on covert stealth operation. <laughs> Alright guys. So we begin walking up this really dark road with no street lights leaving our cars behind and it is super eerie. It is too silent. It is dead quiet, no noise whatsoever, and we're slowly making our way up to this place, and we finally reach the abandoned institution without, you know, getting the attention of security or triggering anything, and this place is fenced off with a huge barbed wire fence, probably about eight foot tall, okay? So, and on the barbed wire fence, there's signs saying monitored by... Australian police or security or trespassers will be prosecuted, but your boy Venix, he don't give no fucks, alright? So, this place is known for, like, teenagers and kids going in, checking it out and everything, and getting caught, of course, so obviously they've put up deterrence to try and, you know, make people think twice before entering. And I thought twice. And the second time I thought about it, I still thought it would have been a really fucking cool idea to go inside. So there was actually this hole in the fence, obviously, where someone else has been through to enter this place. It looked like it was just cut with a pair of bolt cutters. And the hole itself was actually really small, so we all had to do an Elton John and get down on our hands and knees and get dirty and crawl through the hole, you know what I mean? So uh, we all get through, we're covered in a little bit of mud, not too bothered, and there's no locks on the actual doors in this place because I assume they figured a barbed wire fence is going to stop people. Well, I uh, think again, guys. So we get in there, we put our torches on because obviously we're inside. It's not going to draw as much attention as it would have them on outside. And we start looking around and this place is super fucking eerie. You can actually walk into the cells which have uh, obviously been abandoned now, but you can see where patients have slept and lived there for years or however long, and this place was super creepy. It just had a really eerie vibe to it, but uh, it wasn't all that scary because there probably was about six, seven of us, and uh, this is where things take a turn for the worst 
So we're all wandering around inside this abandoned mental asylum, checking out everything, taking photos and whatnot, when we see these really bright lights come peering through the window. And I was so confused at first. Like, it could have been a fucking UFO, it could have been a bloody shooting star will hit the window, who bloody knows? But the logical thing, and my buddy Kane was there, he peers out the window, and he's like, all right, guys, we need to go. And I was like, dude, what's going on? What's happening? So I have a look out the window as well, and I see this big four-wheel drive, jacked up, huge tires, got sirens on the top of it, and it's high beams on, shooting through the window. At this point, everybody was in panic mode. However, I tried to keep a level head, and I tried to keep everything organized. I was like, all right, guys, game plan is we're going to loop around to the side of the asylum, and we're going to go the opposite way of this four-wheel drive, and we're going to exit through the front hole. Obviously, though, the four-wheel drive knew about this entry and exit because I'm sure they deal with hooligan kids like us all the time. And it's pretty obvious it's a hole in the fence. It's the only hole in the fence. How else did we get in there? And how else are we going to get out? So we start making our way around and the four-wheel drive just speeds up and loops back around to where this hole is. So we have to gap it quickly back inside the mental asylum. And if it wasn't scary enough being in an abandoned mental asylum itself, we also had a four-wheel drive chasing us around. So, you know, that's something just to add to the equation there. At this point, we all genuinely thought we were done. We were considering just fessing up, walking out, handing ourselves in because, you know, we've got one hole in the fence, that's our exit, that's our entry, and they know where it is and they're waiting. So we're all in here, we're just like, what the hell do we do? What are we gonna do, guys? And then suddenly a light bulb appeared in my head. My buddy Kay, who was wearing this really woolly, thick jumper, right? He was also in the asylum, and I looked at him. I looked at his jumper. And remember that eight foot barbed wire fence I told you guys about? Well, the barbed wire fence isn't as effective when you got a jumper wrapped around it, is it? So I quickly ask my buddy Kate's jumper and I start wrapping around this top layer of the barbed wire fence, okay? And at this point we're making a little bit of noise, the fence is rattling, we're all trying to talk, everyone's asking what the hell's going on, and obviously this security vehicle, this four-wheel drive, obviously has heard some noise from the back, so they start approaching the side, okay? And they start looping around the back, and we can just see these high beams, these lights slowly creeping around the corner. So so since I wrapped the jump around, I was the first one over, and all of us got up and over and out except for our buddy Cam. So remember as I said before how these high beams and this four wheel drive slowly creeping around the corner. When everyone got over except Cam and it was his turn, that's when the four wheel drive was at the corner. And if he were to even attempt to jump over, he would have blown our cover, they would have known we were there, and we can't outrun a car, can we? So Cam quickly darts back inside, and me and my buddies run the opposite way down the hill back to our cars, okay? And my buddy Kay gets on the phone, he starts calling Cam, he's like, dude, where the hell are you? We need you to get you out, like, we can't leave you there, you know? And my buddy Cam is fully freaking out. He's inside an abandoned asylum by himself with security after him, and all his friends have just left him. And we were not ever going to leave him there, you can't do that, and plus, even if he did get caught, he probably would have had to fess up who he was with anyway, so we all would have got caught. So it was in everybody's best interest to get him the hell out of there. So we devised a plan to get Cam out of there. So the idea was someone with a torch was going to go distract security by alerting them, keeping a torch on on the distance in the opposite direction of Cam so he could run out through the hole in the fence, okay? So while this was happening, Cam was running out and security was distracted. And me and the rest of the guys were quickly running towards the vehicle so we could go do a U-turn, quickly pick them back up and drive off the scene, okay? Remember, we had our cars parked down a long way down this road, okay? Because we didn't want to be, like, making too much noise or alerting anyone on our way up there. So we all had to run down this hill and then up another hill and it was a pretty long run and it felt like forever, honestly. And me and Kay were the first ones to the car. Kay waited for my buddy Hunter and the plan was to meet back up at Macca's and we'll go from there. So Kane took off, I hopped in my car, quickly lapped around, did a U-turn, drove back up the road I just ran down, and when I began driving back up this road, the security car just started creeping back down this road I just ran up, okay? So we're both heading in the same direction at each other, and my friends are in the middle. So I quickly gas it on the accelerator, pick up my friends really quickly, and then I just fly off down the road, and we managed to escape the security van. It was one of the most insane nights and so much bloody fun. I really wish I had my GoPro on and recorded it. Would have made an awesome video for you guys. But moral of the story, 
don't do stupid shit like that and if you're gonna do it be safe about it and luckily we escaped without you know getting caught by security who knows what would have happened we probably just would have got a slap on the wrist and told to go home they may have called our parents but thankfully enough we got out of there and it was it was super clutch you know it was like a ninja diffuse s and d round eight you feel me anyway guys it has been your boy venix hopefully you guys did enjoy today's life story it's been a really long time since i've done one if you guys do want to see more let me know in the comments down below and if you guys are new around here click that red shiny subscribe button and as always have a marvelous day.